Oh, sure. Hey. You know, Grandpa was never more humble than the times when he occasionally had to admit, admit that he messed up. And I'll tell you what, you know, because Grandpa R.T. was a human man too, and you know, we all do make mistakes, and of course when people like us make mistakes, it gets a little more grandiose. <laughs> well anyway, this one time, uh, Grandpa and some of the elders had to get together to intervene on the horses down there in Ruby Valley. Now, for those of you who don't know, the ranchers out there in northern Nevada and the Forest Service people have been known to uh, go on to the Shoshone Reservation out there, especially back in the day, probably even today. I haven't been out there in a while, so I'm not sure what's going on really. But back in the day, they would come out in secret with helicopters and 18-wheelers, round up the horses illegally and steal them because the horses were grazing freely as is appropriate and the ranchers wanted that grazing ground that's on the reservation. You know, the white ranchers, not the Indian ranchers. And so they would illegally steal the horses that the tribe had out there running free and they would auction them off. It's a wild mustang. So from time to time people would protest. They'd figure out when they were when the government or the ranchers were coming out there with their choppers and 18 wheelers and rounded up the horses. And they would go out there and protest and intervene and and sometimes it got uh, got pretty serious. Uh, one time uh, a priest came out there, I believe he was Buddhist, if I remember right, he might have been Catholic, but I'm pretty certain he was Buddhist. And in order to get the 18-wheeler stopped on the road, which there were big protests and the government was coming out trying to round everybody up, in order to save those horses, this priest stepped out in front, 18-wheeler, doused himself and set himself on fire. That was the only way he could get them to stop. And unfortunately, it didn't last. They stopped doing it out in the open. And they went covert. And so it was this one winter that they were coming in, sneaking in, when there was a little bit of snow on the ground to uh, go in and round up the horses, thinking, well, everybody's at home, everybody's asleep, everybody's trying to stay warm, now's a good time to get out there. Well, truth is, they were right. It was a good time to get out there. And that's what they did. They went out there with their helicopters they, and four-wheelers, and they rounded up the horses, and they were loading them into the 18-wheeler, trying to, trying to get all that done, you know, in that process. And uh, Grandpa got window, and some of the elders got together over at his place, and they got out the sacred medicine drum. And now this is a very old drum, so old the skin is black, and it's even got a hole in it, and the skin is black on it. And Grandpa, when I go out to his place, he would let me use that drum to do ceremony. And it helped me, it, it was really just incredible sound. So many uh, medicine people had used it over so many centuries that it just, it had a beautiful sound. And uh, unfortunately, since his passing, you know, there's been some problems and a lot of that stuff has disappeared. And I, I don't have any idea where it is anymore. But uh, Grandpa got that drum out and said, yeah, I was using this drum right here, you know. And I was like, yep, yeah, that's a good drum. And then he lowered his head and he told me the story about how they got together. And the only thing they could think of to stop these horses from being stolen was to conjure a snowstorm. Well, they started drumming. They started singing. And hours went by. And all these medicine elders are drumming and singing. 
and the snows rolled in, and they got angrier the more they thought about it. They got put out the more they thought about it because they really felt they took it personally. And they really felt like they had been betrayed, which of course they had. Uh, one thing Americans are good at is betrayal. I mean, historically, there's a lot, a lot back, backing that up. So uh, that's when Grandpa he got a little bashful look on his face. He said, "Yeah," and then we lost control. <laughs> now, for him to admit that is pretty serious. But basically, what they were trying to do was get one or two feet of snow in order to uh, stop the 18 wheelers from being able to leave. Well, before it was all said and done, they had buried themselves in. <laughs> they got about four feet of snow and everybody was stuck everywhere. And I'll tell you what, it was hilarious to see this old medicine elder sitting there talking about the time he snowed himself into his house along with the other elders. <laughs> it was pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, it took a while to dig that one out and melt that one off. But they saved the horses. And that's the important thing. At least that time. Unfortunately, it's been many times since I understand where we weren't quite so fortunate. But, uh, it's important to remember how dangerous the medicine way can be and how careful you have to be when you're calling on Creator's power. Make sure that you, uh, you know what you're doing and that you're authorized to do these things in a proper way because a lot of harm can come to people by not doing things in a proper, in a proper way. Fortunately, in this case, nobody was hurt, just slightly inconvenienced for a while. Maybe more than slightly, but inconvenienced. And everybody was ready for a good winter. So it worked out, no harm done. So just wanted to share that story at the time when the elders snowed themselves in. So fucking beautiful.